morning. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord, and further them with your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you and by you be brought to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and doom. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin on you today, loving him and walking in his ways and keeping his commandments, statutes and decrees, you will live and grow numerous, says the Lord your God, will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. If, however, you turn away your hearts and will not listen, but are led astray and adore and serve other gods, I tell you now that you will certainly perish. You will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life, then, that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice, and holding fast to him, for that will mean life for you a long life for you to live on the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away, for the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself? The Gospel of the Lord. There's a whole line of belief, not from the Catholic perspective, but from another perspective, and it is sort of termed the gospel of prosperity. And the idea is, if you pray to the Lord and you live a righteous life, that he will reward you literally with material things, big bucks. And the reality of that gospel at times, the gospel of prosperity, is... Well, if you're not prosperous, then you're not doing it right. (laughs) Oftentimes, that is connected to a solicitation by the people in charge of preaching that particular type of gospel so they can help you to get along your way in the gospel of prosperity. I think that that type of thought and thinking and promotion of that reality does a great deal of disservice to the actual gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the prosperity that Jesus is preaching has nothing, nothing, nothing to do with prosperity as the world would define it. And so, if you're choosing to follow Jesus, you need to hear today's gospel very clearly. Because he's not saying, if you do everything right, The path will be smooth. You won't have issues. You won't have concerns. It'll just be great. He's saying, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. You can literally say Jesus did not promise us a rose garden. And yet so often I think we function under that reality that if we just do it right, all the bad will go away. That's not going to happen. And when we think about how you have to live your life to follow Jesus Christ, I think we have to look particularly at his life. Now, we celebrate in the faith a number of people who are martyrs. And some of them were confronted with martyrdom very rapidly. Like they were okay, and then they were arrested, and then they were killed. Or something happened violently, and they were killed. Okay. But I want to go back to the source, the, the, the original martyr for the faith, 
Jesus Christ, the word of God. And if you just take some time this Lent to think and read the Gospels and, and read any one of the four Gospels, you will see very early on that there is a tension building between Jesus and the establishment. And it is not something that goes unnoticed. Many times the disciples are saying to him, hey, don't go here. Hey, don't do this. Hey, let's not do this. Because they didn't want literally to poke the bear, to poke the establishment. But here's what I want you to reflect on, if you would, through this Lenten season. As you're reading that gospel, reflect on the mindset of Jesus. Jesus was not unaware of the tension. Jesus was not unaware of the consequences of his decision. Thus, the proclamation today, the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. What I would like us to think about focusing on is the mindset of Jesus that called him forward in spite of an awareness of the consequences. In other words, there were times when he probably thought about doing something and the process was, if I do this, I'm really going to make such and such mad and they're already mad at me, I could get killed for doing this. And then he said to himself, but I'm going to do it anyhow. Because it is for this for which I came. So for us to prosper following the gospel of Jesus Christ, means an act of the will to put ourselves where God calls us to be and literally to let the chips fall where they may. St. Paul talks about it. Jesus mentions it here. It's a disregard for most of what the world thinks is success. I remember one of our professors, Deacon Benjamin Echo, telling us one time, he says, when you guys are pastors, he said, you won't understand this for many years. He said, if you guys are pastors and everybody loves you, you're doing something wrong. Because part of being a pastor is throwing out the challenges of the gospel. And you know, the longer I'm ordained, the more I understand what he's talking about. I still don't like it, but I understand it. And I would extend that to the priesthood of the people. If you are in the situation where everybody likes you, you're probably not being a challenging enough person 
related to the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Martyrdom is a choice to follow the Lord into the jaws of death, whatever that may mean. And so as we begin the season of Lent, maybe read a gospel. Look at that tension as it builds and builds and builds. Look at the indications of Jesus' awareness of that tension. Look at the hesitancy of the disciples to allow him to follow that path and look at his insistence that he will. And then realize that what he says to each and every one of us is what he said to them at the seashore. Come, follow me. Let us present our needs to our loving God, confident God will hear them. That the Lord may inspire men and women to choose to follow Christ through vocations to the ordained and consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That the Holy Spirit may renew the commitment of our nation's leaders in choosing life. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That God may give strength to those whose crosses seem too burdensome to bear. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. That Christ may bless our practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving during this Lenten season. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For Peggy, J. Bell, and all those who lose their life this day, that they may gain eternal life in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Loving God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those we hold within our hearts. We ask that you answer them in the name of Jesus, your Son, and our Lord. we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Regard with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings we set upon this sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, Contribute to the feeding of the poor and help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us both here and across the way offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the blessing of your heavenly gifts, we humbly beseech you, Almighty God, that they may always be for us a source of both pardon and salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Have a good day.